Good morning, everyone. Welcome to another update for Global Stocks and Commodities for the 5th of February. Uh, we've had another very positive week and uh, particularly uh, Friday night where markets in the US finished uh, in very positive fashion indeed. And uh, there is just continues to be such a stark difference between the American market and uh, the Australian market. And in fact, the Australian market, even with uh, with Europe and and China. Um, so we really are underperforming here in our local market, that's for sure. Uh, Donald Trump, of course, is uh, is a double edged sword. Um, the policies that he's pursuing uh, would appear as though they're going to be net positive for the US economy and therefore have some sort of net positive impact on the, on the rest of the world. Uh, and the market is certainly responding in that fashion. However, there are some significant negatives to uh, to what he's doing, and so that creates this uncertainty. But at the moment, that's not really playing out in the market. So we remain very much in uptrend, uh, and the U.S. earnings season is certainly supporting uh, the valuation. So I don't have any concerns from a fundamental point of view. Uh, yes, there will probably be some disruption because of things that Trump may say or do. Um, but uh, basically, the the trend, the uptrend remains, and uh, that's all we need to know at this point in time. So let's take a look at the week. Uh, the S and P uh, dipped early in the week and then strengthened uh, towards the end. So net, it finished up three points. Um, there is a huge list of potential worries through uh, Europe, through the Middle East, uh, China, Japan. Um, a list of uh, concerns around Trump with, to do with protectionism and the impact that that might have. Uh, the list just goes on and on and on. But despite that, the uptrend remains. And that's it's been the situation now throughout 2016. And, and when you really think about it, it's always the situation. There's always a list of things that could unstitch a stock market. Um, and a lot of people seem to focus all their energies on that, but it's just a complete waste of time and a waste of energy. So the the uptrend remains, that's really all that we need to know. The earnings season in America is about 55% through at this point in time. Uh, the earnings results are good enough to support valuations. So the argument that you will consistently see from the people that want to call a top in the market, the, the permanent bearish outlook people, just screw it up and throw it in the bin because it's it's actually quite rubbish. Um, some of the, the rubbish that I read to do with US valuations. Yeah, sure, there's some stocks that are a bit overvalued, but uh, the, the vast majority of the market, uh, that is not the case. And earnings season is certainly justifying the current valuations. We've also got global data turning positive uh, in just in the last week, in particular in China and in Europe. Uh, some of the economic data was uh, was pointing to um, improvements. So, you know, you can't say that things are about to come off the boil. The technicals look strong, as we'll see on the US uh, S&P chart. Uh, so there's no issues there. Uh, of course, the offset to this positive outlook is, is that, you know, Trump is a wild card. You never know what he's going to say and do next. Um, however, remark markets have remained remarkably stable. The prediction was that in the period following the election, um, that markets would behave badly. They didn't. And then the prediction was, well, after the inauguration, once he get into, gets into office, then markets will behave badly, and they haven't. So, you know, I think we've just got to recognise what's going on. And there are some uh, terrific sector rotations occurring um, as members of specialist share education know full well what sectors we're taking advantage of now. There's, uh, there's three or four sectors that have been in extended bear markets that have turned the corner and uh, are providing profitable opportunities. And, uh, and that's going to continue. So let's take a look at the S&P chart. So you can see we closed at uh, pretty much an equal all-time high. Uh, the same level as the 25th of January. And uh, we're basically just knocking on the door of, of 2,300 points. The Dow Jones, of course, uh, managed to scramble above 20,000, which everyone was waiting with bated breath on, but it didn't interest me too much. I don't know why there's so much focus on the Dow Jones when it's um, an index that uh, only represents 30 stocks. 
and 30 stocks based on price, not on market capitalization. I just, I don't, honestly don't see the point of the Dow Jones. It seems a completely useless index to me, um, and I refuse to take any notice of it. The S&P and the Russell is uh, is where the action's at. Speaking of the Russell, let's have a look at the Russell 2000, and you can see that we're basically at all-time highs and very, very close in, in this consolidation band, of course, to the top of that little channel. And you'd have to say on current signs that the next move is to the upside. Now, that doesn't guarantee anything, but it's certainly where the odds are certainly stacked at the moment. Uh, the NASDAQ continues to push to new highs, so it's it's in an uptrend. Technology stocks, as I've been talking about for probably nearly four years now, uh, technology stocks continue to lead the way. It's just such a powerful trend, and it's hard to see what's going to derail it, frankly. Turning now to Aussie stocks, uh, the Aussie dollar was higher to um, almost 77 cents. Um, a little bit of that is due to the US dollar being a bit lower, um, but it's mostly about some very strong trade data that came out in Australia during the week, and our dollar has kicked up quite strongly on that. Uh, the ASX 200 lost 95 points on the week, so that was pretty much uh, all the gains that have occurred since uh, the breakout at 5600, which occurred just before Christmas. And... Uh, it's really the, the banks led the market up and the banks are leading the market down. And, and uh, again, I find the Australian uh, ASX 200 index is a pretty useless index to follow because it, it's just a mirror image of the banks. You, you might as well just look at the banking index. There's, there's really no difference. And if you compare the Australian market with, uh, with global markets, and we'll have a look at a few in just a minute, um, it really is a little bit of a sorry tale, to be honest. So let's just take a look at that before we go to precious metals. So we'll start with the DAX, the German DAX, and you can see that um, the DAX is basically getting up towards uh, 12,000 points. Uh, it's not at its highs. Highs are up here at about 12,300. But it's certainly in quite a quite a definite uptrend, as you as you can see. Uh, turning then to the UK index, the FTSE, also clearly an uptrend um, and is pretty close to its all-time highs. So great strength being shown in the UK market. Turn now to the Australian market. We pan back and we see just how far below our all-time peak that we were or that we are. And we're not even at the peak that was formed in April um, nearly two years ago, uh, so 22 months ago, and uh, and we're not even um, not even really that close to that level around 6,000. So our market ex exceedingly disappointing. Uh, it's a reflection of I think where our economy is at, and it's a reflection of the fact that um, you know we're being incredibly poorly governed by both sides of politics. And, um, you know, Australia needs to shake itself out of the lethargy that we're in. Uh, be, otherwise, we're going to lose our position in the global uh, competitive market in a, in a major way. Turning now to precious metals, um, they look like they're on the cusp of, um, of really starting to accelerate the trend higher. We're finally starting to get some confirmation from the, uh, the ETF market. Money is flowing back into the ETF market. Uh, GLD got down the holdings in trust in, in uh, GLD, got down under 800 tonnes, got down to about 790. Uh, they've kicked back up to about 815 tonnes. So um, there's there's been 20, 25 tonnes added in the last uh, week and a bit. So that's been quite a positive move. And that also adds to the turnaround that we're seeing in the futures market where the level of speculative longs is increasing and the level of speculative shorts is decreasing. So the money is now starting to uh, to back the turnaround. The action in silver has been highly positive. It's actually done better than gold. Um, not so much on Friday night, but over the last uh, month or so, the, the silver action has been really quite positive. Gold ended up higher by $28 on the week, so it was a strong week. 
um, it's broken resistance and uh, and the stocks are, are trending steadily higher. So it's a pretty good news outlook for uh, for precious metals. So we'll take a look first of all at silver. So you can see we've had uh, uh, really quite a strong move. We we're under $16 back uh, at Christmas time and now we're at uh, 17 and a half pushing towards 18 uh, just um, about five or six weeks later. So, and we've formed a new high. So this, uh, we've beaten this previous peak that was formed in early December. Turning then to uh, gold on a, um, on a daily basis, not quite as strong in the last little month. You can see it's really more of a consolidation, whereas silver has really uh, clearly formed a new high. But nevertheless, it's heading in the right direction. We had quite a shallow retrace exactly to the 38.2. So you, you got to love the technical patterns when they fall uh, into place that that precisely. And, uh, you know, it looks for all the world like we will probably get a breakout uh, above um, 12, 1220. Uh, that'll be that'll be key to see a, a breakout above 1220 to 1230. I think that'll be quite decisive. And just a bit of a wider view. This is gold on a um, weekly basis. Here was the run-up in the first half of 2016. Then the sell-off that um, was was pretty scary. Called, caused a lot of people to question whether the bull market in uh, in gold stocks was, uh, was finished. Um, certainly caused a lot of people to make um, fairly unfortunate decisions about the, about their holdings and um, you know it was due to a set of circumstances that some of them were one-offs and some of them were just because this was such a powerful rally that it always had to undo in some way but there were there were really three significant events that being brexit uh, the u.s election and then the u.s fed decision on uh, on raising interest rates that each time they basically um, put a, a spike in the in the gold uh, tire and um, and we got this cascade of selling would appear that that's all done and um, and we're heading back in the upwards direction just looking at GDX so stocks doing quite well uh, doing better than the uh, than the metal is at this stage which is normal so stocks leading the way and now that we've got money flowing back into ETFs and futures then um, it's it's a fairly positive outlook uh, turning to other commodities, copper uh, slipped back to uh, $2.61. Um, that really uh, all occurred on Friday. Uh, but base metal stocks are doing extremely well. Um, and uh, there's still plenty more upside there, I feel. Uh, crude oil is uh, just under 54. And it's stuck in this uh, range between uh, support at 52 and resistance at 55 both of those levels are quite important so you want to look for a breakout or a breakdown on those levels at the moment the market doesn't seem to know which way it's going to go and we're not getting any lead from commodity stocks either uh, from uh, oil stocks i should say there's the uh, spot chart for copper over the last six months so just wrapping it all up um, don't fall for the, the classic investor trap. And, uh, and the reason I keep bringing this up is that is that a lot of people still get uh, caught up in, in what the media is writing. Um, and the, the media is, is, uh, is, you know, generally wrong at, uh, at the turning points and, uh, and often wrong most times when it comes to the direction of the market. The human nature trade is to focus on all the negatives that are out there, and there's a long list of them. There's no question about that. But at this point in time, they're all potential negatives. They haven't happened, and a lot of them won't happen. And uh, and equally, investors allow the positives to slip by unnoticed. And it's just such a wrong a psychological attitude to approach the market uh, with, and it's why most people struggle in the market. Love him or hate him. Um, Trump is lifting the stifling burden of government regulation that, that has been holding back the American economy. And it's the same here in Australia. And it's the same in Europe, uh, probably worse in Europe. Um, 
you know, government regulation is just stifling productivity and uh, the ability of corporates to uh, to you know get on with um, with building the economy, and I think that's going to be a significant positive. The reduction in taxes, um, the re- removal of a lot of government red tape, um, significant infrastructure spending, which the U.S. economy needs, um, are all going to be significant positives. And the market is uh, the market is picking up on it. So the odds heavily favour more upside. Um, my final thought to leave you with, and I say it very, very regularly, and some of you may be getting sick of hearing it, but it's so important. It is the single most important thing that anyone needs to do, and that's to develop a plan that is suitable for themselves, stay focused on it, and uh, focus on reliable execution, and just shut out the media and, uh, and forget all the rest of the stuff. Um, and also be aware of your own biases. We, we all have biases of certain things that we think should happen. Just try and catch yourself out um, succumbing to your biases and, and just uh, just stick with what is. There's my contact details for non-members if anyone wishes to communicate with me and uh, I'm sure it'll be another fascinating week and I'll be back with you uh, next Sunday. Cheers. <music>